Uh, I am Dr. Patta Radhakrishna. I am the head of uh, Department of Surgical Gastroenterology and Advanced Laparoscopic Surgery at SRM Institute of Medical Sciences, Vodapani, Chennai. Uh, this patient, uh, Mrs. Shamala, was brought to me by her friend about a year ago with uh, recurrent attacks of upper abdominal pain and uh, ultrasound scan done elsewhere had shown evidence of gallstones. And then when I saw her, took history, examined her and looked through her investigations and we confirmed her uh, gallstones by a repeat ultrasound scan on the liver function test here and advised her surgery. I uh, did um, take some time in uh, showing her a video presentation of all about gallstones. This is the gallbladder and underneath that you can see a small balloon like structure uh, that is what is gallbladder with stones in it and uh, the presence of stones can lead to uh, obstruction of the cystic duct uh, by a stone and the passage of bile into the bile duct gets blocked and the pressure inside the gallbladder increases and sometimes it gets infected uh, going on to what is called acute cholecystitis which is a semi-emergency and is a quite a painful condition and uh, when the cystic duct gets blocked the bile cannot drain and that will lead to an infection which is characterized by fever, nausea and right upper abdominal pain and that will require uh, one is hospitalization, um, possibly ICU has to have antibiotics and it all require what is called as laparoscopic uh, or open cholecystectomy by which gallbladder is removed. Patients often ask whether, whether they can live without gallbladder, yes the gallbladder is not necessary for digestion. In certain other patients, when the stones are small, the stones as you see there can pass on through the cystic duct into the bile duct the, where the, the passage of bile will get blocked and then uh, the pressure in the bile duct uh, increases and patients develop uh, what is called as jaundice uh, by where they can uh, uh, develop yellowness of the eyes, itching and so on and that is a, an emergency requiring immediate treatment. How uh, they can cause problems and uh, um, how we need to treat them and, and I said that she will require removal of the gallbladder by a laparoscopic method and I also told her that uh, she needs to stay in the hospital just for six hours, come in the morning, get a gallbladder removed and go back in the afternoon. And then um, I also answered uh, very three common questions generally asked, one is can't you take just the stones off and why do you remove the gallbladder? Then for that my answer was that the uh, non-functioning gallbladder is the cause for gallstones. So if stones are removed, they are going to form again. So it's necessary to remove the gallbladder. And the second question is if gallbladder is removed, what will happen to the digestion? I said digestion will improve. Uh, I actually at the present moment, uh, the gallbladder is not contributing anything to digestion. And the third most important question that she asks is, uh, what can I eat and what ca can't I eat after surgery? I said, you can eat everything. There is no any such restriction. And after she was convinced, uh, she was planning to get operated, but I know I couldn't see her for another one year and she came back recently again and then this time we took her up for surgery and uh, again I reiterated the reasons for removal of gallbladder and also talked about uh, uh, how uh, comfortable it will be. Then I sent her to Dr. Pooja, consultant anesthesiologist who specializes in uh, daycare anesthesia, especially she is one of the um, specialists in the field of TAP block, transverse abdominal plain block which uh, uh, will be explained to her in detail and then taken up for surgery. Dr. Pooja Bagdi Agrawal, anesthesiologist at Sims Hospitals. So we have a patient today who I am going to see and she is scheduled for a ambulatory laparoscopic cholecystectomy tomorrow. The question is, is ambulatory laparoscopic cholecystectomy possible or in uh, layman words a daycare 
surgery of the gallbladder possible. It is being done in the western world day in and day out. It is the standard of care there. In India, we want to popularize this concept because it's safe and the patients will also be happy. So how is it possible? The anesthesiologist plays an important role in daycare surgeries. All patients are most worried about pain. Will I be okay doctor if I go home? Will I have pain? Will I have any nausea? Will I have vomiting? Will I be able to walk? Will I need help? Will I be able to manage by myself? The answer to all these questions are yes. You will have no pain. You will be able to walk. You will have no nausea. You will have no vomiting. So this has been made possible by some anesthesia techniques. So along with the balanced general anesthesia, we do an ultrasound guided bilateral dual tab block. When the patient is under general anesthesia, with the help of an ultrasound, we give them a block that blocks the nerves that supply the abdominal wall. So when the patient wakes up, he or she will be comfortable enough to walk about. Let me explain this as a sequence of events. So once the surgeon has seen the patient and feels that the patient requires a gallbladder removal surgery, he assesses the patient and decides, okay, fine, this patient is all right, this patient can be done and sends to the anesthesiologist. So can all patients be done as daycare? Most of the patients can be done, except patients who have severe heart disease, severe lung problems, liver problems, kidney problems, are, we don't prefer to do them as daycare. Obese people, can they be done as daycare? Yes, we have done up to BMI of 45 as daycare. It depends on their effort tolerance and depends on other factors as well. Wherever possible, for whoever possible, we feel that they will be okay to have a daycare. We also look at the social aspect, that they should have someone at home to be with them. Can the elderly be done? Yes, the elderly also can have a daycare laparoscopic surgery. So once a patient comes to me for a pre-op assessment, I assess the patient, look at her bloods, her investigations and feel if everything is normal, then we explain to the patient that she has to be fasting for 8 hours for solid food and milk, but we allow them to have water till 3 hours before the surgery time. Then we tell them that once she has to report to the daycare two hours prior to the scheduled time of the surgery, once she comes to the hospital, she will be directed to, to the daycare unit. He or she will be given hospital attire to wear. And once all the paper formalities are done, they will be shifted to the operation theatre where I will see them. We will put an IV line for them take them to the operation theatre, there will be few people around them, all are there for their well-being and to take care during the procedure, the surgeons, the anesthetists, the nurses, the OT technicians, the housekeeping people. So once we take them to the operation theatre and connect them to the monitor, we will be giving her or him a general anesthesia. Under anesthesia, we will be giving an ultrasound guided block and once that is done, the surgeons will start the surgery. Once the surgery is over, you will wake up and then we will move you to the recovery room. The patient will be in the recovery room for an hour or so and then will be shifted back to the daycare unit. In a couple of hours, the patient will be allowed to have liquids and soft diet and also encouraged to get up, walk and also pass urine. With this technique, most of the patients are able to get up and walk in about three hours and they usually go home in about six hours. A pain proforma is given to them where they are advised to fill up their pain scores. They are prescribed oral analgesics to be taken 
at regular intervals for the next three or four days and then they come for a follow-up at 48 hours. We also call them at 24 hours. The nurse gives a call at 24 hours after the patient goes home to just check on the patient to know how they're doing, whether they're okay or not. We also give them medicines to, so that they do not have any post-operative nausea and vomiting. And then when they're sent home, they just go as they came. They look just the same absolutely comfortable with the tap block we also tell them that see the abdomen may feel little different some people say tight some people just say different we use the local anesthetic so we have had patients who have given us a feedback that the abdomen feels a little different for even up to 36 hours but they don't feel pain so when they have no pain when they have no nausea when they have no vomiting they're all very comfortable to go home and they're very confident. And a lot goes into when we communicate with them, when we tell them what to expect, when they know what to expect, then they deal with it better and then they know it's possible. Shamla, madam, how are you? Good. How are you? Now, you have to eat the operation. What do you eat at night? At night, idli. Idli. Juice. You don't eat it? No. You don't eat it. No. How are you? What are you doing? Are you normal? Yes, I'm normal. I'm normal. I'm normal. I'm normal. I'm normal. I'm happy. 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 Normal routine? Yes, it's a normal routine. Do you have to do the operation? No, no. What do you tell the other people in the street? No, they're happy. They don't tell the other people. They tell the other people. Do you have to do the other three deliveries? Yes. Do you have to do the other people in the street? Yes. Do you have to do the other people in the street? Yes. Do you have to do the other people in the street? Yes. Do you have to do the other people in the street? Yes. Enak terapi weight ke pointing ada nala. Hmm. Orang hospital le nama ya. Patient dah inda anda. Anu ma, anda feelingnya illa. Ni semua we illa. Idrul ini besar lalu ke ni semua we illa. Ippun inga itu matra lala sabdinga bandinga. Ippun itu matri ini beri arah cikgu itu matri vali bandu jina. Aunggil ke itu matri operation panu nana inga aunggil bayam mil kuda de. Kandi pas solra nana. Bayi mana hilang solita, nak nak ke allah ke solita, nana yo nalar dan nalar dan solra angga. Angga two days siri ni dah angga hospital lo, nana nak nak ke Bangalore lo. Okay. Two days siri ni angga pain a iru, nging apa ni nama happy iru, nging kait angga phone lo we. Angga Bangalore lo angga. Iping a iru. Iping a. In the operation Bangalore lo. Amma amma. Ah. Ye tu nama macam mana deh? One ni right, cakap. One ni dah. Amma. Pada. Hmm. Okay. Ile nana free a iru, no problem. Kuncung orang pain illa. Ani kerana ni pain ni lah, anak. Unggul kau ada achi rumah erka. Ama. Bayi mila mau pergi. Ia seperti itu, seperti itu kan, kau cuma bayi mai erka. Madah lalu, ipa anda bayi mai illa. Patu peru suggestion pan. Nariya peru ke, ini madri pan lah, we teri ada. Oh. Ada main lah. Um. Ipo unggul nata nara kau, anggota orang orang itu base. Two days. Nariya peru ke, ini madri pan lah, ini madri irk, ini madri treatment pan lah, na ipo dia kau, anda teri ada. Ah ah. Ada awareness dah increase pan lah. Ada sulit kan? Apa anda orang orang ada three days kandi pa irk muda so nangga. Apa nama doktor mana? Ia adalah half day yang selesai. Saya ada tiga hari sebenarnya half day yang aku perlu beri mereka. Ia adalah yang
So you have seen uh, a lady who was very apprehensive about her laparoscopic surgery and the pain and uh, the duration of recovery thereafter uh, recovered so well so quickly and uh, uh, a lot of it a lot of credit goes to Dr. Pooja and her uh, tab block but then again uh, what is the surgeon's role in making this uh, day care laparoscopic surgery possible is one is the selection of patients um, and one has to be careful in selecting patients and should avoid patients with major cardiac disease, uh, severe hypothyroidism or coagulation disorders or high grade cirrhosis. Um, then again, uh, even uh, very severe cases of acute cholecystitis where the chances of uh, conversion or more should be avoided. Then again, uh, one has to follow a standard operative technique in that certain technique should be followed so one knows as to what should be the outcome with that particular technique. Then again, uh, one should be very careful with hemostasis. Generally, in, uh, in the last about 750 cases of um, the, uh, gallbladder surgeries we have done laparoscopically as daycare, only two patients we would put a drain and the drain we removed the following day. So uh, that goes to show that we are very, very careful with hemostasis. And then again, uh, the thing which intrigues us, which wasn't uh, earlier was how is this patients recovering so very well they don't have any visceral pain somatic pain etc so the modern anesthesia has done a lot of good to it and then of course uh, a safe and sound technique should help thank you